In a prestigious school called Shuqin Academy, a student council body has been put in place, but it can only be led by the best of the best. Kagaya Shinomiya is the vice president of the student council and the daughter of the owner of Japan's biggest conglomerate, Shinomiya Group. She has also won awards in many different fields. The president is Miyuki Shiragane, who while was not born into a wealthy family, has devoted his life to studying and gained the top score in every exam. As they walk through the school, every student glares admirably and wonders if they are dating. In the student council room, Kagaya pours Miyuki tea and mentions the rumor of them dating. He dismisses it as a result of teenage hormones, but thinks that he would consider going out with her if she begged him. Miyuki knows that Kagaya likes him and it is only a matter of time before Kagaya breaks and confesses. As he smirks deviously, Kagaya thinks that the student body is ignorant as fuck as she cannot even comprehend lowering herself to a commoner's level. Then again, if he sold his body and went on his knees. Pause. Resume. If he did that, she might consider going out with him. Kagaya sniggers. What? I said snigger not nick. Half a year later, both of them are getting impatient and are using more active tactics to bait the other into confessing. Yet, this is all happening without Chika, the secretary knowing. She gives them movie tickets which she can't go to and Miyuki mentions that he has free time. However, this means that he is inviting Kagaya to go with him on a date. Miyuki sits nervously, not knowing what to do while Kagaya arrogantly waits for him to burst. Miyuki assures Kagaya that there is no romance involved and any of it is coming from her. A brilliant move indeed. She thinks of rejecting him, but since she was the one who fabricated the free tickets that Chika got, it would be a waste to decline. Looking at him with puppy eyes, she wants him to invite her more passionately. This breaks Miyuki and Kagaya seizes the opportunity by grabbing his wrists and admitting that she wants to learn about love. As the gears in both their heads turn, Chika gives them tickets for a non-romantic movie, destroying their tactics. Because their brains have been fried, they look for the only source of sugar, but Chika casually takes it. Later, Kagaya finds a love letter in her mailbox, and Miyuki sniggers at how stupid the sender is for thinking Kagaya will accept. Despite this, Kagaya accepts and Miyuki is dumbfounded. He replays the situation where he asks her not to date the guy, but that would be the same as confessing. Kagaya comments on how fun the date would be, but we all know she is just playing mind games with Miyuki. Miyuki speaks professionally as a student council president, advising against the idea, but if she really insists on going on that date, he will tell the teacher on her behalf. By threatening to snitch, Miyuki tries to corner Kagaya, but she assures him that she is willing to face anything for true love and will offer her body and soul. Miyuki stresses out and asks her if his confession would change things hypothetically speaking. Immediately, Kagaya starts blushing and Miyuki takes advantage of this by questioning how true her love is. Still, Kagaya pridefully threatens to go on the date and he grabs her shoulder. Never mind, it's just Chika crying but this successfully stops Kagaya from going. As Kagaya and Miyuki have a stroll, they see couples doing some PDA shit. In the room, Kagaya is not happy that those students are doing that stuff. Miyuki takes out his box lunch, and it is Kagaya's first time seeing commoner food as her lunches are made by private chefs. Still, something about sausages and packaged seasoned rice seems amazing. She drools at the octopus sausage and wants a try. Meanwhile, Chika eats Miyuki's long juicy sausage. Kagaya scornfully glances back at Chika, being jealous she got the food. Chika eats and drinks from the same part Miyuki ate from and Kagaya tears up about their indirect kiss. She reminisces on her memories with Chika and glares even more menacingly. So can play that game. The next day, she takes out her Michelin star lunch and cannot wait for Miyuki to beg her for some. Despite this, Miyuki just takes out his own lunch and starts talking to Chika while Kagaya stands there awkwardly. She menacingly offers Miyuki her lunch, but Miyuki sees it as a pity donation, so he refuses it even though Kagaya just wants his octopus sausage. She spots Chika with her own lunchbox and Chika mentions that Miyuki made an extra one for her. Kagaya gives her a death glare and Miyuki, terrified, devours his food and runs out. She kneels on the ground and Chika shares her food with Kagaya, changing Kagaya's mind about Chika. At her home, Kagaya talks about Miyuki to her maid, A.I. Hayasaka, and blushes. Inside the student council room, 
Chika is surprised that Miyuki has bought a smartphone as he is a cheapskate. Miyuki is planning for Kagaya to ask for his contact, but she doesn't give a shit. He himself cannot ask for her number because that would basically be confessing and it would start all kinds of rumors. Kagaya knows of Miyuki's plan as she was the one sending hints that would make him buy a phone. Meanwhile, Miyuki changes his profile picture to a picture of him as a kid and mentions that he will change it in three minutes. This causes Kagaya to get nervous as she wants to see a glimpse of Miyuki's childhood. Having no choice, she stands up and starts crying. Deceptive little bastard. Miyuki feels bad and apologizes by showing her the picture but immediately notices his mistake as Kagaya stops scrying and looks at him in arrogance. She takes out her flip phone. Bruh. Later, Chika proposes that they should go on a student council vacation and Miyuki pictures a nice mountainous view in the dark starry sky. Never mind, he is having a wet dream. Despite this, Kagaya wants the trip to be by the ocean. She pictures him drooling over her body in a swimsuit. As the sun sets, Miyuki will confess his love. But this is a bad idea for Miyuki as he doesn't even know how to swim so he tries to state every issue with the beach but Kagaya is too rich to have any of those problems. Not only that, she has prepared a manual for opposing whatever Miyuki says. She mentions the disgusting bugs in the mountains and Miyuki squirms as he is scared of them. He realizes now that both options are bad for him and completely folds as he agrees to go to the beach. Chika wants to buy a new swimsuit as her boobs have gotten bigger and Kagaya looks back enviously as Chika has big fucking bazookas while she has BB gun pellets on her chest. How will her plan of seduction work if Chika looks sexier than her? She now wants to go to the mountains instead but Miyuki has changed his mind and wants to go to the ocean. Fighting, they make Chika decide and she decides on going to Mount Osher. Mount Osher is littered with underworld structures symbolizing life and death. Afterwards, we can see a student asking Miyuki for romantic advice. Buddy, that is the opposite of who you want to ask. As they talk, Kagaya eavesdrops on them. The guy tells Miyuki about his crush, and Miyuki spouts some bullshit about how women's actions contradict their thoughts. Yeah, seems about right. Still, the boy thinks otherwise as his crush made fun of him for being single. She's obviously picking on him. Yet, Miyuki twists her words to make it seem like she likes him and the boy cannot believe that he is so endearing and popular. Miyuki assures him that he will be able to protect his crush. He walks towards the door where Kagaya is hidden and shows him how to confess by slamming the wall and professing his love. Kagaya breathes heavily outside. The boy mentions that Miyuki and Kagaya are dating and he quickly stops to assure him that they are not as Kagaya has been acting like a bitch lately. He tells the student his feelings for Kagaya and describes how charming, cute, and perfect Kagaya is even though Miyuki knows that Kagaya is standing outside the door. Excited, the boy runs out and Chika sees Kagaya standing outside the room. Afterwards, the wall slam actually worked and somehow, they are now a couple. Also, Kagaya happily pours Miyuki tea.